Hesselbach's triangle is on my to-do list. I don't know where it came from or how long it's been there. I imagine you asked me to talk about Hesselbach's triangle and you've probably graduated from medicine and have been working as a surgeon for some years now, but hey, it's on my to-do list, so let's get it to done. Hesselbach's triangle, it's a little bit of anatomy, it's also known as the inguinal triangle now. Hesselbach's triangle is a region of the anterior abdominal wall, low down. As I said, it's also called the inguinal triangle, which hopefully gives you a clue as to where it is. Uh, Frank Hesselbach was a German surgeon and anatomist um, who described this a couple of hundred years ago. He spent a lot of time looking at inguinal and femoral hernias. Right, let us, let's get ourselves an anterior abdominal wall. Hesselbach's triangle is here and also here. So, um, this muscle here is rectus abdominis, the straight muscle in the middle of the anterior abdominal wall. This here is the inguinal ligament and then running from about here to here are the inferior epigastric blood vessel, artery and vein. Um, and those, so the, the boundaries of the triangle are the lateral edge of the rectus sheath or the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle. Um, that's the medial border. The inferior border is the superior edge of the inguinal ligament and the lateral border are the inferior epigastric vessels. But we can't see the inferior epigastric vessels because they're deep. They're on the other side of, of these muscles. They're deep to those. They're not on this model. Um, this is rectus abdominis from the deep side. These are the muscles of the anterolateral abdominal wall. So on the deep surface here, we've got the uh, transversalis fascia and the transversus abdominis muscle. Um, oh, I'm going to have to disembowel you a bit further. Uh, I'm going to take everything out to get to those. Okay, uh, what we're seeing here, uh, we're seeing the aorta become the common iliac artery and the common iliac vein is with it. And down here, they've divided. So the internal iliac vessels go into the pelvis. The external iliac vessels are gonna run down here. And when these vessels pass deep to the inguinal ligament and enter the lower limb, they become the femoral artery and the femoral vein. So, oh, there are some branches there. Um, there are a couple of tiny little nubbins there, branches here. So just before the external iliac artery and vein pass deep to the inguinal ligament, they give off these inferior epigastric vessels and they will run that away. So if they're running that away and I put the anterior abdominal wall on and then we turn this around, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that the inferior epigastric vessels are gonna run obliquely. So from the external iliac vessels, they're gonna to run to rectus abdominis. So do you get a sense of that triangle now? So those inferior epigastric vessels then are gonna run from the external iliac vessels and they're gonna run obliquely like this. The inguinal ligament, by the way, is this ligament here, so it's running from the anterior superior iliac spine at the anterior edge of the iliac crest, it's running from there to the pubic tubercle, the pubis bone here. So that's the inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament acts as kind of an anchoring point for some of the abdominal wall muscles. It attaches them to bone and it's also kind of like a, 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 a link or a separation between the abdominopelvic cavity and the lower limb, which is hanging off here. Now, this is the inguinal ligament. The inguinal canal is what makes Hesselbach's triangle or the inguinal triangle useful. 
The blood vessels and nerves that supply and drain the testes within the scrotum need to pass from the abdominopelvic cavity through the abdominal wall to get to the scrotum. And they do that by passing through the inguinal canal. So the inguinal ligament is here, the inguinal canal is superior to this. The inguinal canal is kind of formed by some of the abdominal muscles curling around and what have you. So the inguinal canal has a deep opening, the deep inguinal ring, and it has a superficial opening, the superficial inguinal ring. This is a weakness in the abdominal wall. The muscles of the abdominal wall are keeping the abdominal contents in. For example, the small bowel which can move around. If the contents of the abdomen um, leave the abdomen by passing through the abdominal wall, that's a hernia. If these inguinal structures are involved, this is an inguinal hernia. And we, we can talk about small bowel passing through the abdominal wall here. Now in Hesselbach's triangle there, the, the abdominal wall there um, the transversalis fascia forming the deep wall of the inguinal canal can become weak with age with changes to connective tissue and things like that. If the small bowel herniates through the transversalis fascia directly, that is a direct inguinal hernia. That weakness is within Hesselbach's triangle or within the inguinal triangle. So um, you would, you know, if the small bowel pushes through the abdominal wall, you're going to get a, a lump here. You're going to get a lump. You're going to be able to palpate a lump of small bowel. Um, so if the hernia is within Hesselbach's triangle, it's a direct inguinal hernia. Now the superficial, in sorry, the deep inguinal ring in here, if small bowel passes into the deep inguinal ring and through the inguinal canal, that's an indirect inguinal hernia because it's taken an indirect route. That would give you a lump outside Hesselbach's triangle. That would be lateral to the epigastric vessels. There'd be a lump out here, right? So if you have a, a hernia lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels, that's an indirect inguinal hernia. So that's one of the uses of Hesselbach's triangle. Obviously, if you're a surgeon and you're going to go in and you're going to repair a direct inguinal hernia, Hesselbach's triangle or the inguinal triangle is an important area, region for you. You understand the anatomical landmarks, you understand the anatomical structures that are nearby and you use that to repair the direct hernia, right? That was more difficult to demonstrate than I thought it would be because of that three-dimensional nature. But Hesselbach's triangle is the same thing as the inguinal triangle. It is for, it's, a, it's a region of the anterior abdominal wall. It's formed by the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle, the inferior epigastric vessels, and the inguinal ligament down here. Um, and it's the location of a direct inguinal hernia. It's the location of a potential weakness of the transversalis fascia. Okay. Hesselbach's triangle, ki 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 that counts as to done, kind of done. There we go, ticked. All right, see you next week. Mm -hmm.